football has always been the release valve for a lot of people. It's, you know, their escape from the regular nine to five or whatever their working pattern is. And it's where they go for 90 minutes to forget about the world. And the pub is the very beginning of that journey. The two are just inextricably linked to me. I mean, I had one of the best nights of my life on licensed premises when Berry got promoted in 2011. said on Twitter, we're all going back to the social club, all the players, and around 600 fans met them there, and for the next few hours, we drank together, we sang together, and it remains one of the greatest nights of my life. I remember hugging every single player as they walked in. It was just incredible. It was like nothing I'd ever experienced before. The English football pub, it's linked to the whole match day experience. A good friend of mine once said, a good day out, sport by 90 minutes of football, and then never a true thing said. So it's about meeting your mates, having a few pints, predicting what's going to happen, you know, your hopes, your fears, etc. Most original football grounds were built in the heart of the community of what they were aiming to represent, near to where the pubs were originally anyway. These buildings are, are part of the fabric of the area. Every person would probably use the same pub, so they would be emotionally attached to that pub as well. Every football club would have had a local pub that was associated to it. We are all going to that same place. You're going to what you could call your holy place. It was that sense of belonging, that sense of being part of something. It's all levels of life, and you can have a bin man and a prince talking about football, and they'll both be on the same page. You know, each will respect the other's opinion because football is that universal thing. There's a community feel to it that everyone is there for the same reason. When people say it about football. You've known these guys for 20 years, but you don't know their first name, and you just know them as by characteristics, everyone sees each other in the booze and it comes like a little community. No matter how crap they are, you're not looking for anything other than just pints and atmosphere. The tables are sticky, the bar is sticky, there's beer all over the floor. You know, it's, you're just rubbing shoulders with people that you don't know. You sense the atmosphere, you sense that everyone's there for the same cause. You're all getting involved in that kindred spirit of supporting your team and wanting your team to win. The next best thing to not going to a football game is going to the pub and sat with 100 plus strangers that you don't know and being part of that same cause, I said that same atmosphere, you know, you're all there to, to watch your team. When you end up hugging and kissing strangers that you don't even know just because someone scored a goal, you get that euphoria. England played Sweden in the World Cup um, in 2018 and we were in our, our local pub. We all piled into this, this pitch black pub with no lights on, just the glare of the tellies really, and the sun beaming in from the outside. And then England scored. There was people on the tables, there was tables actually falling over, there was beers throwing, uh, glasses smashed, there was actually beer dripping down from the ceiling. I was up on a chair, people had shirts off, swinging them around the head, and some of my mates cried in hugging each other outside after the game, after we'd won. It was one of the greatest moments I've ever experienced, not even just in football, just in life in general. I wouldn't think of going anywhere else when I was going to the match. That was always the place I'd end up. For me, the local pub and the local team gave an escape from the grind of the working week. When you used to turn up at the ground and the way ground, you'd ask the first question, where's the nearest pub if there was a steward or somebody around? Because there's a tribal nature to football and you'd, you'd all go in your colours and you'd chant your team songs. It was great to see an away pub full of your own fans, all wearing the colours and feeling all part of one big family. Most matches, players came in in those days and you could mix with them and... That doesn't happen now, but I remember in 1984 sitting with our goalkeeper and consoling him when we'd just missed out on promotion on the last day. He was holding back the tears and I suppose I was holding back mine, but it was uh, 
an emotional time. For me, I remember when I was walking to the ground, I could always pass three pubs. Sadly, there's only one left now. One blew up, and the other one's converting to flats. The death of the English pub around football grounds actually started quite a long time ago. Although West Ham moved from their traditional grounds, Upton Park, the bowling ground, to the London Stadium, probably five, six, even ten years before that, one by one, the pubs that we were used to as we grew up changed. And the problem is, you can't just sustain a pub for once every two weeks in the football season. They've got to serve the local community. And the local community in the East End just don't frequent pubs anymore. As a local person, it's heartbreaking at times to see an area that I grew up in and loved, even though it was a tough area, change. But that is the way of the East End. The East End's always been transient as a population. We've always been a part of London, of immigration where 25% of Newham were born outside of Newham in the 1970s. I think we're at 85% now. People are loyal to a pub, so if you live in an area, you generally drink in one pub. West Ham moved into an area that was industrial wasteland. There's no pub as such, like traditional pub, probably within a 10, 15 minute walk of the London Stadium. If you take the West Ham fans that are upset over the mood, a lot of it is the loss of the traditional aspect of the day. So the fact that near to the ground, it's mainly bars that charge, you know, five, six pound a pint, rather than the pubs we were drinking in that were charging 350 a pint. The London Stadium move show the modern Premier League football as is. And it sort of sums it up that the London Stadium is Premier League, Upton Park is the old football league, community football as such, and that West Ham is now distant from the community. When I was a kid, there was 15 pubs I could think of within walking distance of West Ham. When we left in 2015, we were probably down to five. I think we found it all very surreal when COVID hit and they just ended the football season. That was when we realised that it was going to have a big impact on our lives, it was going to have a big impact on the pub. We found ourselves in a really difficult situation where the government are advising people not to go to pubs, but yet we still have to be able to make a living. The night we were finally told to close, I did get quite tearful in the evening, because no, no one knew what was happening. You didn't know when you were going to see your family again, when you were going to see your friends again. We've seen this a lot with the coronavirus pandemic. There's so many people out there, and I probably include myself in this, if you don't realise how much of an escapism that is for some people. There's a certain group of people that, that need English pubs and English pub culture because it's what gets them through life. There were times that I realised I wasn't missing the football. I was missing the community, and I was missing my friends, our regular once every two weeks, sit down and chat and see what's going on in each other's lives. You know, one of my friends was going through a messy divorce last year. We've not been able to be there and support him. I was missing everything about being part of something that's bigger than I am. There's been a large disconnect with me when I haven't been able to go to the pub and watch the football with fellow fans, and instead just watching it at home. I think a lot of people suffered with mental health, not being able to have that escapism or meeting up with people. They might be, might just be sat at home. It's kind of took its toll on me as a football fan because I've not been able to enjoy the game as much without having that kind of institution that have that connection. It's like you've grown up playing football, watching football, going to the matches, and then eventually when you're old enough, going to the pubs and, and kind of watching football multiple times a week on the telly in the pubs with your mates. And to that be taken away from you in an instant and not being able to access that, it's such a big part of your life. It's like losing a bit of your soul, essentially. 
what I want more than anything when this whole wretched affair comes to an end is to just sit in a pub and read the paper and have two pints and a bag of crisps. That is such a simple pleasure, but it's all that I want at the moment. Just that being able to feel the atmosphere of a place just from sitting in it and not knowing what might happen in there. Every trip to the pub now will be a voyage of discovery. So it'll be just nice to go in, say, you know, not seeing you for a bit, how's things? Catching up. Just catching up with your football mates and uh, looking forward to, you know, what's, what's in front of us, what, what the season holds for us. Whether we're home or away, uh, I know we'll meet up with those people, God willing, and, you know, we, we can chew the fat again. The thing I miss to really pinpoint it is 15 minutes before kickoff when you've got to sink your pint as quickly as possible and you walk towards the stadium. It's like you're walking in like arm in arm with hundreds of people all doing the same thing. And you just get, it's just like, right, I'm fucking ready for this. Two hours goes like 10 minutes. It's, it's such a beautiful feeling. You genuinely wonder if coronavirus means that the same people won't be there. Will people not want to go to football? Will people not want to be in a packed pub? How many people do you hear all the time say we will never get back to normal with that? It is an absolute institution, football pubs. It's, many of them won't survive, which would be heartbreaking, but the first thing you'll do when you go and see your team won't be go straight into the stadium, you'll go into that pub. And there'll be this collective feeling of just absolute jubilation that we've defeated it. need that and that will always be part of football. It is complete escapism for everyone. That is just as big a part as going to the matches. Just that phrase of just working during the week, spend your money on football and then go back to work. That's Britain for so many people and it's, it's brilliant. It's amazing.